Hi, Leo family. I'm really, really happy to be sitting down here with my hearts, my heart-centered people. Um, I'm so excited to be here with you. It's such an honor to be a part of this family and to do this reading with you. And I'm going to feel it. And I don't know, today may be one of those days where I end up crying <laughs> in this reading. <sighs> wow. I didn't expect that. Okay. So um, this March is kind of intense. It's coming up. We are in Pisces season. This explains part of the tears. And Pisces season for Leos is eighth house energy. It is the transformation house, right? It is energy that isn't necessarily the easiest for fire signs because it asks us to work in a different modality. And I had a lot of notes for us, for you guys, um, that was coming up when I was feeling out the March energy. And a quote came up for me in a book called Women Who Run With Wolves. It's by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, and it's a beautiful book. Um, if you really like archetypes and mythology and fairy tales and things like that, highly recommend it. Beautiful book. Um, and a quote came up that just, I had to write it down the second I saw it and, and knew it fit with the March readings because it felt so right. And it's, there is something waiting at the edge of the woods and it is our fate to meet it. Um, you know, our curiosity, the curiosity, the Leo curiosity has to override the cautiousness of the cat, right? And I think that the, the, the most tricky part of being curious is being cur curious to utilize new skills, right? Um, curious to utilize specific skills, which are relaxing, allowing, breathing, and knowing. Now these are skills that Leos have been very steadfastly working toward homing in on and honing for three years. It has been a very specific cycle in asking for Leos to breathe, to learn that they do not have to be the ones doing all the work all the time. And quite honestly, if you want to talk about the edge of the woods, that's truly the edge of the woods. You don't know what's in those woods. It's scary to think that maybe in those woods there's no love. Maybe in the woods there's no, there's nothing co good coming in. Right now, let's talk about the astrology here because that was just my intuitive note. Right, we haven't talked about the astrology yet, and we have yet to look at um, the cards. So, let's go through this, you guys. Okay, so we have a lot of energy in the eighth house for Leos in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, the Sun in Pisces. We have a full moon on the first of the month in Virgo, which is in second house, you know, your money what you have around you. So this is a great time to kind of adjust that. You know, if you want to like organize your house or that would be a great way to utilize that, that energy because that full moon is going to be really, really sensitive. So it'll be a great time to organize your house, you know, get comfy um, in that or, you know, just feel stable in your material. We have the new moon in Pisces in the eighth house, here is a really great seeds of intention. You want to talk about the edge of the woods and finding out what's inside of the woods and being brave enough to go there. This is where you really want to think what woods you're going into, what you want that to feel like. It's going to be deeply spiritual, new moon, so slow down, take it in. You're going to have to be taking a lot of extra naps. Let me just tell you, until we hit Aries season on March 20th, you're going to be wanting to take a lot of those naps. We do have Aries season on March 20th. And then, of course, we have Mercury going retrograde in Aries two days later. Of course we do. So our communication is going to get a little funky near the end of the month and then through to mid-April. Um, I always say with that, you know, that is a chance to home, be impeccable with your word. If you have something to say to somebody, say it as directly and clearly as possible. Don't leave room for there to be misunderstandings. If you feel distanced from somebody, reach out and, and also just understand that sometimes nothing's about you, nothing's personal. Everybody's kind of working through that Mercury retrograde energy, so a little bit of patience goes a long way. Focus in on yourself. 
truly. Um, and this month is not going to be so flashy externally all the time, which might be frustrating for my dear Leos out there. I'm going to pull one more card. I was doing three sets of three this month, but for some reason I'm feeling like we need a final topper card because there's a lot. I'm looking at these cards right now, you guys, and um, man, I felt so much coming in to this and now I'm like seeing it and there's a really, really complex range of things happening for Leos. Oh, by the way, we also have a full moon on um, March 31st, second blue moon of the year in Libra in your third house um, of communication. So, and short term, uh, short distance travel and like all that fun, like lively energy. So while we have a Mercury retrograde going on, we also have your third house being lit up by this bright moon. There's a lot of start and stop and yes, let's go. And then, oh, no, let's not go energy this month. That's why I'm saying like patience and focusing on yourself is going to be really helpful. So you don't get dragged around too much by the, the collective energy, so to speak. And you don't get dragged around by other people's they're also doing start and stop stuff. That's the other thing I will say this month is a lot about starting and stopping for everybody. So don't take it personally if somebody's also dealing with that because they are and they're not, you know, they've got things they've got to figure out too. So, okay, the first three cards are case in point here. Five of Cups, the Star, and the King of Pentacles. Now, this is speaking to... I'm like getting shivers over here right now. Wow, you guys... I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Self-worth. I'm feeling this for all the Leos out there right now, actually. Like, deeply. I don't think people understand how much Leos struggle with self-worth. Because of the, the show stopping and the and the brightness and the courage and the temerity to keep going. But five of cups, I think the Piscean energy, one thing that it does do, and part of the reason I'm getting so teary just like now working in this time of the year is that it, it is digging in the midnight garden. It is, it is putting to bed old wounds and it, but it brings them up first and you have to sit and face them and feel them, feel your way through them. And that's here. What I love about the Five of Cups, though, is it is about honoring your pain. And that Virgo full moon, actually, the video I did for that, this card came up um, as the first card. And I think, Leos, you're going to be feeling this. It's really important to sit with any of that pain. Acknowledge it. You know, even write a letter to it, thanking it for its service to you, right? However, and in doing that, though, in doing that, it really does open this energy for you, this warmth for you, right? This vision for you. Um, this, you know, these are two healing energies. Look at it. The poetry is amazing. We have two cups here by the figure. These are the two upright cups she hasn't turned around to look at yet. And the water bearer, the star, the Aquarian energy, such a healing energy has two vessels. And you are being called to something bigger that you haven't quite seen yet. So the beginning of the month, you may feel you haven't, you can't see it. Maybe it's eluding you. Maybe, maybe something that you believed was going to come into fruition is taking its sweet time and you wonder what the hell is going on. Why you're not getting the information, why you're not getting the insight, the input, whatever. Have patience with yourself. Take a deep breath. Witness that part of yourself that tends to belittle that tends to think that everything is your fault and that the only reason you're not happy is because everybody looks at you and wants nothing to do with you. You know, you know what voice I'm talking about. That voice is, is being asked to go really strongly. I think that full moon is going to be so powerful. And of course, you know, we have the King of Pentacles here. Speaking of self-worth, this is a more of that theme because this is about long-term investments. The King of Pentacles didn't get here covered in ivy and old growth plants in his comfortable state by planting a seed and then just expecting it to bloom the next morning, right? He planted his seeds a while ago 
And he, he kept showing up for a few years. And now he's got all this stuff. That's exactly what's going on here. There's a slow growth element going on here. Um, we do have Jupiter going retrograde, which means we're all being asked to slow down heal starting on March 8th. And we do have this Mercury retrograde. So we have slow down energy. And we have all this Piscean energy. So we have a lot going on there. The beginning of this month is very much about how, you know, like, this is here, but the star is also another energy that does not pop up overnight. Slow growth. Our deepest held dreams are so deeply tied to our healing and to our acknowledging, right? Man, that is powerful and that is poetry. And I, it, you know, honestly, when I see those three cards together, I do think there may be some quietness the beginning of the month and it may be alarming. And there's where that first step toward the edge of the woods, the thing that is calling to you, to Leo's this month is going to be, is taking the step to the quiet. Scary stuff, right? It's so scary. All right. The next three cards, please don't be alarmed when I show you these. I'm surprised too, but it's the judgment card, the tower and the six of swords. Okay. Yes. Some of you maybe are leaving something behind, right? It's very possible that you're leaving behind a relationship, a personality, a job. But here's the thing with this. Here's the thing with this. This is powerful. I'm getting my head wrapped around it. But what do I always say about the digging in the midnight garden? That's where we are. Eighth house, digging in the midnight garden. And I talk about the midnight garden. It's the deep, dark soil where all of our all of our greatest power lies, but also where our greatest wounds are. And it's this pain. It can be scary to dig into that soil. But what I'm noticing with these three cards is you are the motor behind the change. This is not about somebody coming in and giving you some catastrophic piece of news that suddenly your life is turned upside down and now you no longer get to live in this house or be with this person or do this job or be the person you thought you were going to be. I'm going to be very clear about this right now because I think it's really important, Leos, for you to listen in when I tell you that this energy is not about somebody else breaking your heart or pushing you away. This is about you burning and incinerating an old version of yourself so utterly and completely that nobody could ever throw you back into this ever again. And I know this has been a process. I know we've been going through this for months. I've been talking about this, how it is time to take your throne. But you know, it's that getting back on the, on the, on the mat and continuing to spar with this. It's getting back on the balance beam and continuing to learn how to balance. It's getting back up on that horse. That is how you learn a new skill. And the thing that's been happening is whether or not you're perceiving it or not, you've been slowly getting better and better and better at getting back up on that horse and going for it. And when I see this, for those of you who watch Game of Thrones, you know what it makes me think of? Daenerys, when she walks through the fire, near the beginning of the series. And she comes out. She survives, right? And I know Daenerys has, we don't have to get into the trajectory of that character necessarily. It's the symbolism, right? Of coming out from underground, taking a breath of fresh air, allowing a lightning strike moment to clarify and cleanse your foundation so that you are free toppling a power dynamic that no longer serves you. Pushing out into the unknown. Getting into that boat and setting sail for a horizon you can't see yet, but you know is there. This is the edge of the woods. This is the edge of the woods. And I tell you what, it is. it does look scary, doesn't it? It does look scary. It looks terrifying. But here's what's amazing about this, you guys. And it is so powerful. I am like, the homework assignment is not easy this month because it is about going here. And I tell you what, you know what's weird about this energy? I know the tower looks so graphic, but this is the quiet. This is the not sending those extra texts all the time. This is the, this is the not making the noise, making the plans, making the things happen. This is, this is you stepping back from all of that. I think that is sometimes scarier energy for Leo's than the just moving and doing, you know, I, 
it's much easier to move and do and just be like, well, at least I'll know what I'm working with then and then I can just let it go and it won't be my fault. This is asking you to be on your own team, to be your own voyager. To be your own voyager. To look out for your own horizon. And that can be really quiet work sometimes, you guys. It also, you know, the other thing here too, for those of you in anything toxic, anything left over from all that learning curve that we've been talking about for the last number of months, you're being asked to release it. Let it go. No more. No. It's a big no right there. And that's been continuing to come back as a theme for you guys over and over and over again. It's been like, you can say no. You can walk away from things. You can put somebody on the back burner. They don't get you just because they kind of show up. No, right? It's another aspect of that energy, but that that's also quiet. No's are quiet. They don't come with a lot afterward. You know what I mean? No is so clear and distinct. There's no noise afterward. There's no echo. There's no reverberation. There's now what? The next horizon that we can't see yet, but it's there and I'll show you. Magician, Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. What's amazing about this is we start the reading off with the Five of Cups. Witnessing our pain. And then getting to see the long-term healing investment and that eventually... You're going to get your way. This is planting a seed and knowing that in a couple of months, that seed is going to be a beautiful flower. Right? And then there's the, there's the, the cataclysm, the storm, the being willing to burn away everything and leave yourself naked with that one seed. And then there's the flowering. Aries season is so magical for Leos. It is a very good energetic time. Even with the Mercury retrograde, Aries season is going to feel 100% easier than the first three weeks of this month. All that stuff that, that I just showed you is all before Aries season on the 20th. Once we get into fire mode, so exciting, we get the movement. The Magician, surprise. You're going to get a surprise this month, a good one. It's going to come after you've been brave enough to step into the woods and dig around in the, in the quiet. It's going to come after that. But when the magician shows up, it's going to be that, ah, see, I was right all along to stick on my team. Right? Here it is. Also, the magician's been coming up a ton this month, and I do think he's, a, he's associated with Mercury and communication. We're all going to be wanting to watch. Everybody's going to be wanting to communicate like crazy. And we're all going to need to be working on being impeccable with what we're saying and what we're doing. There's a volatility to the magician and there's so surprise element. But what I'm getting with this is that there is going to be an eerie quiet the middle of the month where you are going to start to freak out about where your answers are coming from. Like, what is next? Oh my God, I'm never going to hear. And then you get the breath. You break out of the water and you can breathe. And here he is. And it does bring with it something so delicious. So delicious. Utter joy here. Like ease and love, right? That's the partnership Leos have been after for a while. It's been eluding a lot of Leos. That Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups only comes after the Nine of Pentacles has been energetically enacted, right? The more you own your metaphysical space, you are here in this warmth, looking good financially, home-wise. You bring in the love wants to be a part of you. There's a self-assuredness. There's a warrior-like advancement into the darkest of territories this month that is going to make Leo utterly magic. 
but it is like some of the scariest homework I've seen for Leos for a little while because it is about expanding into unknown territory. Now the final card I have is Justice at the top. Okay, sure, some of you might be dealing with a Libra, but here's a yes or no. Here's a yes. That's what I would say. Here's a yes. Here's a commitment. Here's a green light for you. It's going to take you into April with everything you've ever needed. And it's all going to be because you were willing to go into the deep dark woods. You were willing to dive into the deep soil with the bravest of hearts. Wow. I kept it together, you guys. All right, I'm going to close it out there. I love you so much. I'm wearing this gorgeous crown from Pink Loon, and it's really exciting, you guys, because we are going to be sending this to one of you out there. It is for sale. Um, I'm going to leave the website, her website and the link for this specific crown below. It's going to be gone really fast. So if you're seeing this, like, and you're connecting with this beautiful one, one of a kind crown, it's this specific crown. There's only one of these. I'm wearing it for all the videos and then we're sending it out to the person who gets it. Please check her out. 15% off in the rest of her store and check out more because there's going to be more with the crowns coming up. So check that out. Check out my website and my email. I'm going to leave that in the description box. I'm going to be working with people starting in April. I'm traveling in March. So have a little bit of patience. I really want to work with you. Have a beautiful one, Leos. I love you, Leo fam, so very much. Really, I love you, and you are worthy of love. And just please remember that. Always hold your center point. Mwah.